Got the footings dug. So we're gonna go ahead and put some steel in here to reinforce the concrete. It really adds a lot of strength. Uh, we're gonna do two rows of number five, which is five eighths suspended with our rebar chairs. We got a bunch of those. Tell me about this. Oh, a founder in a ditch. Selling on eBay for $23. So that's worth $23. Oh, uh, well, that's what it's selling for. It's old uh, B.W. Abbott, hmm. D.W. CW. <laughs> CW Abbott. Okay. I'm out of Baltimore. Okay. What was it though? Was it a beer? Bitters. 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 Mm hmm. A couple of uh, Manhattans remain with this bad boy. Huh. Cool. $23. Thanks, you holla. We're also going to cut the grade pegs for the concrete out of the same stuff. Ray is setting up a stop right here at 20 inches. That way, Jason doesn't have to measure any of these. Just chop them. It's like you need six, seven, six, seven per side. We moved the reader down 10 inches. Is that what you did? Yeah, 10, one, two, yeah, 10. Okay, so that'll give us 10 inches of concrete if we put top of our grade pegs. Boom. Something's not on. Oh, oh the dirt's, in the, the dirt's in the way. I got it. <laughs> right about there, it's about uh, two inches down. That's good. One down. We're putting these about every five feet. That seems to be a good distance for putting the concrete in. Makes it easy. Just one more tap. Oh, one more tap. It's so close. Is there like an inch of crap on There's the There's like an inch of dirt on the bottom of our grade stick. I told you that, but I said this a little while ago. We gotta redo those. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Yeah, that sounds like metal to metal. Another thing is if you're using this and you tip it this way or tip it that way, any direction really, um, it's not accurate anymore. You have to stand it straight up to be the most accurate. Some new or familiar faces if you've watched a previous video series. Wayne Cutshaw is going to do our heat and air. And him and Jamie are figuring things out. Like where is the air handler going to go? Where's the returns and the ducts? And is there enough room for all that to happen? Not really. <laughs> you really got to think about it to get all your ducks in a row. So, but he's got that don't, part don't covered. encourage him. <laughs> he's, he's, he showed me all the load, all the paperwork that he's able to produce with okay. the uh, computer simulation and the loads for this building to calculate the right amount of heating and air to put in it. Right. For, for starters. And I don't know anything about that other than what I just said. But we've determined what size equipment to get. And now we just have to have a place for it to live. Yep. And we're actually going to have to probably have some specially designed trusses to accommodate the equipment in the mm -hmm. attic space. That's yeah. the only feasible place for yeah, it to live because it's on a slab there's not much room in the basement and there's no time <laughs> for another dad joke so i'm gonna cut you all there all right all right <laughs> you're welcome down one and one eighth Ooh, down one eighth one tap Ooh. says yep that's it zero sixteen ray's going to give you an explanation of how this works to get the concrete level with these pegs what are we doing put these pegs in right check top of the concrete goes to that yep and they're all level because right. we, we set them level. all using okay. that guy right pretty put, simple put really razor rebel razor rebel yeah <laughs> they're all it is just use your razor rebel and get them all level and put the concrete in we're doing this in the corner where we lap them and cross them in the corner Someone told us somewhere that that's the better way to do it, or that's code even. Now the steel isn't required by code. There it is, that's how we're doing it. Crossing them in the corner. So I'm not sure if that really is any stronger than just keeping them parallel. Maybe somebody will know in the comments. I do know that adding the steel is gonna add a ton of strength overall to the footings. I do know that. 220s in there, yeah, just I'm let not, them lap like, them. nah. It's important to hold this up 
off the dirt for it not being in the dirt and it's stronger if it's in you know three inches up or however far that is from the bottom of the concrete footing so we're just going to lift the rebar up that spaces it the way we want it we're going to tie it to each side with these little whirly gig ties that are we've been told are more of a homeowner type of way of tying things versus lineman pliers and a, and a spool of wire but for us they work great we're doing just one small foundation every four or six months or something so that's it we'll put one of them about every five feet hey and i'm also going to go around i've got my probe here this is just a fiberglass rod with a point on it that the inspector gave me a long time ago and i'm just going to go around the footings and make sure you know i can't push this thing in up to like the handles anywhere because that would be <laughs> bad news this is basically what the inspector does right here he comes with a similar type tool if not the same tool and um, checks all the soil around the footing they do make these that are solid steel and they're mainly to find like septic tanks and stuff they don't have that flex in it that flex is what kind of tells you you've reached a limit of good soil compaction there's the one spot i'm going to do again ray because i think i think there is one little soft spot which is okay since we have this steel you can kind of bridge across a couple feet of soft i think we're good so these footings are a full six inches wider than what the plan calls for that's because we just had a two foot bucket. It makes it easier. Also, if the footing gets a little curvy, your foundation still stays on it. One last thing that we normally do is put a sewer sleeve for the sewer line to go out of the house underground later and also a water line sleeve. But in this case, the top of the footings are almost two feet below grade. So what we're gonna do is just run the sleeve through our block work, uh, which is our form for the slab if you didn't know how we're doing this yet. It's gonna be about four courses off the footing, which is 10 inches thick. And that'll get us above grade, like 10 inches here, but we'll be like two and a half feet above grade on that side. You want me to jump over you? <laughs> it's like a little game of uh, standoff here. Um, I'll one. just scoot around. Okay. If you've never done this before, my best tip, and I'm not a pro at it or anything like that, but my best tip would be to uh, pull on this handle as you're doing it upwards towards yourself. And uh, that just tends to get it tighter on top here. So it's kind of pinched together and I'm pulling pretty hard on the handle. If you do too many turns, you'll snap the wire. He keeps looking up to check if we're watching how level he's getting it. He knows we're watching. <laughs> he knows we're watching. <laughs> okay, he's like a little kid, dude. He could care less if he's making it flat or not. He just wants to drive that thing as much as possible. <laughs> he's not even touching the dirt. It's just grazing the top of it. Man, you can put a level on that thing. <laughs> You would not believe how much food three boys can eat. It's incredible. This video is brought to you by Thrive Market and they're an online membership-based grocery store that we use. We buy most of our stuff using the app and they're on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. So here's the deal. We've got three kids, five people total. We like to eat healthy. It's not easy, nor is it cheap. And Thrive Market has made it much more possible for us to get the things we really want to be eating and be able to afford them and get them on the table, on the dinner plate and make it happen. In front of me is just a few of the things out of our last box that we got. I was hoping for all of them, but the kids and Sarah ate some of them before I could get to it. As a Thrive Market member, we save on every single order of the highest quality organic and sustainable products. And if we find a lower price somewhere else, they'll match it. And if we don't make back our annual $60 membership fee and savings, Thrive Market will credit us the difference. Plus, all orders over $49 ship for free. That's it. There's no tipping and no extra charges. Their website and the app filter the catalog of products by diet and lifestyle, product types, and your favorite brands. So whether you're gluten-free, vegan, or keto, or none of those, you can shop by over 90 plus diets and values. Thrive Market's been great for us because we live in a small town. You can't get some of these products in our local grocery store and we're able to get them delivered right to our step without any trouble. A couple of things I've been into lately are these Mike's Mighty Good Craft Ramen with organic noodles for a snack. I love these hop waters, non-alcoholic, 
and all of these a dozen cousins beans I put in tacos and they are fantastic Just click the link down in our video description or head to thrivemarket.com slash Perkins and you'll get 30% off your first order and a gift worth up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Thanks again to Thrive Market. Let's get back to work. This whole area is gonna get filled way up, like probably that high with gravel before we pour the slab. So I'm going around and checking you know, this, make sure we don't wanna skin this off down to this red clay. What's crazy is this stuff is like harder. The top layer is way harder than the clay below it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't see any reason. I don't see any reason to take it out. It'd be a lot of dirt. We're wrapping up for today. I'm just going around and making sure that all these chairs are tied, all the rebar is tied where it's lapping in three places. Everything looks good. Jamie's gonna have to move this whole pile of dirt because we're not gonna get a pumper like we normally do. We're gonna bring a concrete truck in and he's just gonna back in from several different places to get a chute to where we can shoot it right in here. We're back at the job site this morning and we passed our inspection, number one. How'd we do? We did great, we okay. loved it. No complaints? perfect soil for a house. Okay, so we're waiting on the concrete truck. Somebody's gonna be directing the truck. You're best yeah, at hand yes. signals. Yeah. Oh, I got him, all your, uh, <laughs> all your made up hand signals. Yeah. I hope you, you, yeah, you guys so just make don't sure let the guy get way ahead of us because if he does and it's too high, that means we got to shovel a bunch. Mm. So just basically tell him to go as slow as he can stand it. Here he comes. There he goes. Mega shoot. He's, he says he's gonna wet it up and shoot it self leveling. Like all the way out? Self leveling, daddy. Watch out. It's gonna come flying. Ah. Uh, we don't even need, we don't even need those. Need self leveling. Self leveling. Daddy. No. I said easy on the thing. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we don't right, want yeah, it too yeah. wet. No, he, he knows. But yeah. I mean, he can almost reach the yeah. back. So I learned a new, a new hand signal. Okay. He was like yelling at us down there from the street, right? Yeah. And I didn't know what he was saying. Finally, he gets up here. He's like, I was trying to see if you want me to back in. Back or back, back yeah. or front. Oh. Front or back, you want me to back in? Makes sense. I was like, he was like, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> and uh, he, he knows I've been doing it forever. Yeah. And I said, yeah, 20 years. And he said, you never heard of that? I was like, no. <laughs> That's what you like to hear. It's a good sign. Stand back. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. All right, that's a shot right there. All right, start pulling it that way. Wow. That, that was awesome. A lot of concrete really fast. Yeah, I, I think, think we're pretty high right now. Yeah. I can see my first Greg peg right there. Yeah, so, so we're, about we're about two inches two maybe. Inches too deep. Yeah, keep pulling around that corner, Ray. I'm uh, real close right here. That's okay. high, you're still high there. Jason's got the move, he's, he's like paddling with a board. Hey, <laughs> you know? Keep it rolling Keep it slow. All right, that might be it. I think we're good there. Dude, he don't care whatever you say, he don't care dude, about he's, that. He's on the move. He's, he's on just, a mission. Dude, he's... Yeah. <laughs> if anything, we're trying to get this a little low versus a little high is better. A little low, you can build up with the mortar. A little high, 
you got to raise up the whole first course or cut stuff off the first course in areas, which either one of those options is not as fun. I'd rather see just the fuzz of the great peg than bury them. We had him stop rolling. Now we're just raking out what's in the chute, and I think that's going to be just enough. Oh. Yep. To take us to the top of grade here. This foundation is going to take about nine yards of concrete, and a standard delivery is going to be eight yards at the maximum in the area where we live, where they typically drive smaller trucks, and they're used to going up steep inclines. Once you get so steep, the concrete will actually pour out the back so they don't like to load it over eight yards. But given that this was in town, the site is flat, they told me they would put nine yards on the truck, which is unusual and they weren't worried about it. I think it's gonna get it, we're almost there. And that saves us a lot of time of having to get another truck here an hour after this one leaves. That's what the honk means, swing the chute around. Okay, we know that. It's straight. Yeah. <laughs> we might have just the fuzz more than we need. All right, you might notice we're not putting in any J-bars in this foundation. It's because there's no basement and there's no backfill pressure of any soil pressing the foundation laterally across the footing. There's no forces are gonna be applied to this thing really in any lateral direction. So we don't have to, it's not required by code. Although we might drill in a few pins when we get started laying on the block. I don't know. We'll think about it. What's going down there? Man, I was trying to get the chute off of there and I, it was stuck and I was trying to hold way far away and that thing was just spraying water on me the whole time. I saw from way over there, I saw it through water. I knew it was going to be bad. I did. It's got your name on it, you signed it. I know where you He live, signed your though, name. So. <laughs> I know, you probably, he probably poured right. my house. Those things got four wheel drive on them? No, it's got, it's got eight wheel drive. It's got eight wheels on the back. It's got a locker. All four locks. spin? If he hits a button in there. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. And about, 40,000 pounds on the tires. Uh oh. Perfect Toledo, Toledo. Ohio. Or Oregon. Or Oregon? OR? I don't know. Oregon. Yellow. Hey, Crystal, you calling to give me some cash, right? Yeah. Two mil. <laughs> it's an automated. They don't, know what, they don't know what to say. She was like, oh, she said that's going to depend on a couple factors. <laughs> <laughs> like, you might get it. Arlo has a thing where he's dying at some point for us to take block and set it in wet concrete and and not do the first row oh. of mortar i don't know because like you could probably get around half of it and then it'd start hardening up so yeah. I, I don't know but arlo every job he's like oh we gotta set the block yeah. in the first course Call him. Tell him yeah to <laughs> yeah him. arlo that's a wrap for today we got our footings poured we've got our block on site we're gonna lay three courses of that plus one of these header block on the top and our slab will pour down in all these columns in effect creating a giant header or beam on top of the footings and locking the wall into the slab which is a great way to do it really strong we don't really do monolithic pours too much or ever i just think this is i don't know i just like doing this better than doing all the form work i think we can do it faster if you can lay block i think it's a good way to do it but if you don't know how to lay block probably doing the form work out of wood is better. So we'll be back tomorrow if it's not pouring rain.